Good evening, Susan Campfield here from SueStampfield.com. Welcome to my craft room. Come on in. We're going to relax, have fun, make a mess. I'm going to lose stuff. You guys are going to help me find it. <laughs> You're going to give me creative inspiration, and hopefully I'm going to give you creative inspiration. And together we're going to make some fun projects tonight. So thanks for tuning in. Um, we're casual here. Uh, this isn't like a highly polished production. This is just hanging out together in uh, in my craft room. And like I said, um, uh, like my mom says, the creative mind is the messy mind. <laughs> my desk is always messy. So, hey, Mary. Hey, Linda. How are you? Welcome. Thanks for tuning in. Tonight, we're going to make um, a fun fold card. Uh, we're actually going to make two cards if timing works out. And this is a fun fold. Hey, Susan. Um, this is a fun fold that I've been showing. Um, oh, I showed one version of it. Just one. I showed two shorter versions than one of the longer one. And this is a couple more of the longer versions. So, oh, thank you for your kind words, Linda. I, I learn a lot from you guys too. And it's um, it's very, you guys are all very creatively inspiring to me. So I appreciate that. I wanted to mention tomorrow, tomorrow is, uh, the 20th of July, the 20th of July. Well, what, does, what happens then? Hi, Rosemary. Hi, Betty. Um, so on the 20th of July or the 20th of every month, I have our crafter noon event. And I really hope you're able to tune in. Now it's at 3 p.m. Central tomorrow. So if during the day does not work for you, no worries. You can catch the replay. It will be here on my Sue Stampfield YouTube channel. It will be here on my Sue Stamp Susan Campfield Facebook page. It'll also be over in our group of passionate paper crafters. Um, that is the Sue Stampfield Facebook group. Anyone is welcome to join that group. Um, and so what is Crafter Noon? <laughs> so Crafter Noon is something I dreamed up. Uh, well, not the term, but my version of, of uh, the Sue Stampfield Crafter Noon Creative Escape uh, back in January. And um, you guys have been loving it. And so have I. So what I like about Crafter Noon is I design a uh, a fun fold. Usually it's a unique fun fold to me. It's something new for me. And then I think it's fun. It's fun for me to share um, that fun fold card, not just made with one product, one set of products, but I share five different versions using a variety of different products. And that just hopefully that shows you the possibilities of the fold and all that you can do with it, right? Because sometimes we see a card with a certain set of products and we think we have to make it with that product, right? I mean, I know a lot of you are creative and you can take that next step and adapt it to products you have. But um, that's what I love about Crafter Noon that I can share, um, I like to share different things. So I'm super excited. I've been working hard and I I'm really excited about this fold. It's very unique to me. Um, I, hopefully it is to you too. Um, I think you're going to like it. So I'm excited for tomorrow, 3 p.m. Central time uh, here on either my YouTube channel, my Facebook group, or in my Sue Stamfield uh, uh, Facebook. Oh, wait, I said that wrong. Sue Stamfield Facebook group, Susan Campfield page, Facebook page, or here on YouTube. So uh, wherever you can tune in, we'd love to have you take part. And it's always more fun for me if I'm crafting with friends. So thanks for tuning in tonight. I'm excited to share some more things with you tonight. Um, now, part of Crafter Noon is those people who placed a $50 order or more with me last month got a packet in the mail this month, and they're going to make our uh, Crafter Noon Make and Take, the main project, right along with me in the video. Um, if you weren't part of that, that's okay. You still get to watch. I share the, I verbally share the dimensions for that that first fold. And then after the video, I have a uh, tutorial bundle on all of the cards. And they are very detailed. 
<laughs> because I'm a visual learner and I like photo tutorials. So, um, so uh, that is available. Uh, of course, everybody that orders last last month will get it for free. My Stamp Field Stars team members they all get it for free, and then anyone can purchase it. So that goes on later. So it's a good idea if you are kind of want to be in the loop on on Crafternoon and what's the link and all of those things um, to sign up for my emails. And um, that's at SueStampField.com and click on subscribe. Or if you're someone that is always looking for more creative ideas uh, in my emails, I send out free project sheets. Every, every email goes out with at least two <laughs> lately, more than that. Three has been our, our, uh, our mode lately, but um, so uh, make sure you're subscribing to those if you need those creative ideas or if you want to be in the loop on craft noon and all those things. So I'm going to hide that because I forget to hide that sometimes. Oh, thank you for sharing. I appreciate that so much. Got lots of people tuning in on Facebook tonight. We've got our YouTube friends here. Sweet. All right. Thanks, guys. Let's, let's do it. <laughs> I'm going to flip to the desktop camera and we'll get this party started. So we're gonna use two completely different, like I said, I like to use different products. So tonight we're using two completely different products. But before I do that, I did wanna share in the last video, I made one card during the video. We did a lot of playing with the tree lot dies after we made that card and I didn't finish the second card. So I did finish that, I wanna show that to you, but I'll show you the first card um we made in the video and that was this charlie brown christmas tree card now i need to add something to this because one of i think somebody viewing that views on facebook said you know what it needs the little red ornament ball in the in the show there was an ornament ball that's why it bowed over like that i'm like oh of course so i just have to figure out a little ornament that i can um pop on the end of my Charlie Brown tree card, but um, it's so cute. This is in the tree lot dies, believe it or not. So if you were doing a whole tree lot scene, you could add in a uh, Charlie Brown Christmas tree right there in your scene. So uh, we have that one on the inside of the card. I did add one of our um, trees that we made with the tree lot dies. This is a grown up Charlie Brown tree. <laughs> and uh, the sentiments are from, hmm, What's the name of that set? I'm looking on my shelf, uh, Brightest Glow. That's the name of the set here. So uh, a little sparkly uh, Oh, for, for the ornament. I think so. I think maybe in a embellishment or something. I just need to have, make sure it's big enough that it looks like an ornament. So um, uh, stay tuned, <laughs> I'll work on that. Um, but the second card I made after the video ended was this one. So we took, I took the, um, the uh, camper that we made and uh, finished it on this car. So again, I'm using that wintry embossing folder, the snowflake pattern in that folder that is a two pack. And the second uh, folder in that two pack is uh, pine needles. And we're using that one tonight actually. Um, and then this glimmer paper is so cool. We're using this again tonight as well, but completely different look. Uh, and the sending cool wishes, uh, no, sending wishes for a cool Christmas that is from the snowman magic stamp set so um so that was the card i finished after the tutorial but tonight we're gonna make another um uh full step fold card so i've made a couple of these um joe says use a tiny hole from punching one out yeah good idea um so we've got the um this is the shorter version of the faux step fold card with the little gnome. Um, this is paired with the free Rings of Love designer paper. And um, the gnome is from the gnome dies. You can also, there's a really cute uh, gnome stamp set that goes with them. Um, and that's where the sentiment is from. I did want to give you a heads up. The gnome stamp set, the kindest gnome stamp set, uh, it just went on, uh, it just went out of stock uh, yesterday. So um, the bundle cannot be ordered right now. The suite cannot be ordered right now. And I know that's a bummer, but good news is they are due back in stock next week. However, I suspect that this adorable bundle is gonna be going in and out of stock. So if you shoot me an email, if you want me to let you know when it's back in stock, I'm happy to do that. Where's my email address? Mm -mm -mm. I got a little thingy that says, 
Oh, here it is. Email Susan at SueStanfield.com. It's just like you would think, right? Susan at SueStanfield.com. Shoot me an email if you want me to give you a heads up when those kindest gnomes are back in stock. Uh, unfortunately, they aren't back order right now, but it should not be a very long back order. So um, let's make that. Well, I'll leave it up for just a second. Um, so he, I made a little axe. Or it also kind of looks like a hoe. So if you wanted more the look that he's tending, this little woodland gnome is tending his trees here, um, you can make that a hoe. It looks like either one, actually. Um, so this uh, faux step fold card st uh, stands up for display, which is fun. And then it opens up to, to sign. Now, this shorter version doesn't open up completely flat, but it does open up so they can see it. Uh, and I did another version. This one is um, also with the uh, Rings of Love designer paper. That's a free paper during celebration, free with a $50 order. So this was the other version. And then we made this longer one. So tonight we're going to make two other long ones like this. They're going to look completely different. Just it's the same fold, but we're using different products. So we're going to do a gorgeous floral with the, uh, let me go back here, there we go. We're gonna do a gorgeous floral with the Wonderful World um, Designer Series paper and, uh, are we, am I using the stamp set for it? I don't think I am. Um, the Designer Series paper for Wonderful World, which is another free celebration choice. It comes with a beautiful stamp set. Um, this, you can see that snowflake folder again on this little gnome and we used the, um, the puff paint to make his beard fluffy. Um, so, all right, all right, all right, all right. So speaking of Wonderful World, in our last, was this the video before last, we did a whole bunch of these cards. I call them the skinny bits card. <laughs> Because if you're like me, I end up with all these little pieces of designer series paper that are too pretty to throw away. But what can I use them for? Well, this is a four by three quarter inch piece. And so it's uh, this is the perfect card layout for using those pieces up. Um, now, we actually made five cards in that video all with that um, layout. And then I made another one. Uh, with my team. So this, uh, we did the gnome kind of the same as that other card. I also, we also did a gnome that was die cut right out of the paper. Again, that same fun fold. And then with my team, uh, we did some fun with watercoloring. So we actually stamped the gnome from the set on watercolor paper and we uh, watercolored it with uh, just ink refills or ink pads um, and uh, the water uh, painters or water painters is that what they're called I think so um I just I love this particular little stamp he's just so adorable <laughs> um and then we also made a fun one with the hippo so the the five cards that we made in the video the to, the project sheets for all of these went out to my email subscribers um last week right so again if you need creative ideas um sign up for the email list and you'll get those right in your inbox all right i think we're all caught up let's go ahead and start with our paper here i got i got all my little bits tucked in a sleeve here let's pull them out all right we pulled the pin out of the grenade um now i'm gonna do a little bit of cheating tonight and that some things are already done sorry sorry not sorry but we've got we got two cards we gotta make right and i can't go too long because i got a lot of crafternoon fun waiting for me i'm <laughs> over here in a couple bins so uh the the cardstock base for this this uh taller version of the faux step fold card and the advantage of the taller version is that it does open completely flat, right? So you can sign and write and all of those things. So, all right, we're going to score this at, so it's four and a quarter by 11. You're going to score it at one inch. You can see I've already scored mine. Um, where did I score it at? Hey, that was the right size. Um, so one inch and then two inches and then at... Ooh, I have this marker in the wrong spot. Good thing I have this here. And then at six and a half. And I have to move that because for the next one, the next version, I haven't pre-scored it. So, um, so that's how that goes. And then we have another piece here. This one is eight and a half by two and a half. 
and it is scored at, I usually scored at three inches. So I'm going to flip it around. So it's at the three inch mark. Okay. So eight and a half by two and a half scored at three inches. And that's that portion that pops up. So let's take this. Um, I don't want it to go too far away because we're going to need it in a minute or a few minutes, I should say. So then you fold your card. Um, you fold it in half on the um, the score line that's with the bigger sections. And then the two that are narrower, you fold one up. So the opposite way of this fold and fold the other down. And that forms that little stair step for when it stands for display. Okay. You give that a good crease and then it just stands right up like that. All right. Okay. I'm just checking to make sure there weren't any questions. And then we have this piece. We're going to um, crease this one on that three inch mark. Um, I designed this card that we're making for um, uh, a group that I just did a, a, a Zoom party for, a Zoom stamp party for. So shout out to Kathy and all the gals. Um, that was really fun. We did that on Friday. Um, I have a piece of design, uh, not designer paper. <laughs> I have a piece of uh, embossed paper. I One of my favorite embossing folders in the new catalog is this quatrefoil tile embossing folder. Don't ask me how to spell it. Oops. I think I just hit a button. Can you guys still see okay? Um, uh oh, uh oh. Oh, there we go. I thought I was stuck on Zoom. Maybe I am stuck on Zoom. Oh, hold on. Hold on. I think, oh, I hit my two times. Whoa, now we can see all the mess. <laughs> there we go. Sorry. Mm, technology. Oh my goodness. Uh, I know just enough to be dangerous. Um, so this piece of paper is four by four and a quarter and it's embossed with the quatrefoil, blah, 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 quatrefoil tile embossing folder. And so I'm going to adhere it so that the four inch side is across my card. So it gives me that nice border. And then the four and a quarter is fills in the rest of it, right? So we're going to take our seal here, run some seal around the edges of my card or of my embossed piece here. And we're going to pop this on. I swear any card you make with this, this folder, it makes it instantly elegant. <laughs> if you want to step it up a notch in your card making, look for like a wedding card. I don't know. I think it looks great on any card, birthday cards. You want just that little extra elegance. It's just beautiful, isn't it? Oh, love it. All right. Are you going to post the PDF? Kathy, the PDF for this will be going out in the email. So make sure you sign up for, where is it? <laughs> the free project sheet emails, suestampfield.com. Click on subscribe. Anyone is welcome to subscribe to that. And all right, let's make this banner go away so that I don't cover up important stuff. All right, so this is the two and a half by eight and a half scored at three. And we're going to uh, adhere it right here on the front step. <laughs> So I'm going to put some adhesive on the end here. I only want it on the end. I don't want it too far up because I, I have I have this much room, right? So I, I put about half of that. Oh, it's what, a half an inch maybe? And then I'm going to just center it on this piece and adhere it kind of flush with the bottom about in the center. You know, it doesn't have to be exact. Unless, you know, exact is your jam, then go for it. You can even put a ruler down if you want. So I've got that connected, right? And then we have this piece. So I'm going to keep my step folded in. That's what I did when I attached that. I want to keep that folded, flip the whole business over, and I'm going to run some adhesive on the back here. And I'm going to fold that flat. And then when I flip my card, it it pops out for that step and we can decorate this portion. Okay. Why is it called a faux step fold card? Like, is this a fake card? <laughs> well, a real faux, uh, a real step fold card, you actually take your paper trimmer and you do a partial cut. Like you lift it and then you put it down and you start your cut here and then you cut to here and then over here and then you pop the center piece out. Um, it's, it's, 
just a little more involved, this is way easier, <laughs> way easier. You don't have to think so much. So we've got that um, in place. Now uh, we have the seam here. Don't worry about that. We're going to cover that up with this little embossed piece, or you could put designer series paper here, whatever you want. I have another little piece that's been embossed. This is four by three fourths inches. And we're going to run this the length of that and we're going to put that right on the front. Woohoo! All right, so we've got it on the front here. Um, you know, I love cards that they can display. Um, that's a really good point, Donna. Um, you know, we, we put a lot of time and effort <laughs> into our cards, right? And so um, doing a, a fold that has got a built-in display uh, just increases the chance that we can um, uh, have them put our cards out, right? <laughs> or it gives them an opportunity to display our artwork. So uh, Jean has a question here. I'm going to just pop that up and do a quick little sidebar. Could you add the colors used for the watercolor gnome to the next tutorial sheet, please? I certainly can. Um, I can actually tell you right now because it was a little bit weird. Um, so I used Pool Party to start and it became very green toned. It very much looked like mint macaron. So I then took balmy blue and I did some water coloring with the balmy blue and then that bluer blue compared with the, the watercolor version of the pool party became the right, the shade I was after. And then I used petal pink for the nose and hands. I used um, blushing bride for his mouth and then um, smoky slate ink for the shoes. And then uh, I added a lot of water to do the smoky slate accents on his beard. But good question. I will I will share that somewhere. Probably email would be the, be the most logical. So good question, Jean. Thank you. Uh, it's kind of like a pop-up book, right? Uh, that is a good analogy. Okay, so we're going to grab some beautiful designer paper. Now you guys know I love this paper. I've been using this in a, if you want ideas with this paper, holy cow, go through my uh, YouTube playlists. I got loads. <laughs> um, and the, don't forget the stamp sets because those are super fun too. The free stamp set that comes with it um, is loads of fun. So, but we're going to do this version. So we have a strip of paper. Mm. You're going to want to know the size on this, aren't you? i got to think for a second. Two and a quarter by four and three eighths. Is that right? Yes. Four and three eighths. All right. Let's go ahead and do some of our seal on this. And when you're sticking this on, <laughs> please know the flowers are directional. So <clears throat> I almost messed that up, didn't I? So I'm going to put my piece right on here and center it. And that's going to decorate that center panel. Now, you know, it's so funny to me. This is the same card as this, but it looks so different, right? So we're going to finish our card out here. We're going to finish our card um, with a banner. Uh, as you know, if you've been watching my videos lately, you'll know that I absolutely fell in love with the Go To Greeting stamp set. Um, it's a set that has uh, four commonly used greetings in three different sizes in three different fonts, plus a bonus one of the hello. Um, and I love it because <laughs> if I want a happy birthday, I've got it in three sizes and three different fonts. So one of them is going to work with my project. So I'm using the thinking of you. Um, I'm going to show you a couple different versions here. So this one, um, I stamped it in um, Starry Sky. You can see I kind of stamped it to one side and I die cut it with the one of the other products I've been using almost on every video. Uh, I love these dies. These are the uh, Stylish Shapes dies. And I use the um, what do we call that? The longer skinny banner. Let's call it that. That's a good name for it. Um, so I stamped this in full length starry sky. I also did a version where I stamped it off. So what I mean by that is I stamped um, starry sky on a scrap paper first, and then I stamped it on my cardstock. And that gives me a little bit paler color um, than the full length. Can you guys see the difference there? There's no right or wrong here. It's totally up to you and which one you 
think looks better on your project. And then I also did one in rich razzleberry. Now, why do, oh, and that one's pretty crooked, but that's okay. Um, why did I do so many? So in this paper, this designer paper, which is a free, free celebrations choice, um, if you place a $100 order, you can pick this pack of 12 by 12 paper. It comes with the matching stamp set for your free option. And um, you can, there's a whole sheet of small flowers that you can die cut. So I would love for you guys to help me decide which um, flower we're going to add our, our cinnamon on here. Now you can see this one, I've cut off one end of the banner. It doesn't matter because my flower is going to adhere to that. So that's not going to show, but I'd like you to decide, well, maybe I'll leave this in so you can see what our pattern looks like. Uh, let me know if you want number one, number two, number three, or number four to accent our card. Or if you don't care, you don't have to vote, <laughs> but I'm going to zoom up on those guys just a little bit. Uh, one, two, three, or four. Um, I can see that this one, this one, and this one are all in this paper. Um, this one might get covered up a little bit. It depends where we put this. You can kind of move this around based on the pattern you want to see. So if you wanted to, you know, copy the pattern, we could do number one there. Or if we want to introduce something completely different, we could do this one, um, which just doesn't happen to be in the section of the pattern. And then we would do the rich raspberry, or we could do this balloon flower, or we could do this uh, orchid. So one, two, three, or four, let me know your vote. Uh... Oh, three or four. Okay, so I see quite a few votes for number four and quite a few for number three. So let's see what those look like. Number four looks like that. Sorry, I'm off camera. I forgot I was zoomed up. <laughs> number four looks like that. And this one. Okay, let's so let's narrow it down between those two. So vote again. <laughs> do you want number one? We're going to make the orchid number one now. I'm changing it. I know. I mean, you know what? Let's, let's call it A in case someone's voting late. Okay. Do you want A <laughs> or B? A or B? Let me know and we'll go with the most popular vote on that. A or B? Oops. Here they are. Let's look at them too. Let's put them in the camera. A or B? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All right, looks like B is the winner. We got lots of votes for both though. So we're going to go with B, but A would be a nice choice too. And so we're going to take our glue dots and I am all zoomed up. Hang on, hold the phone. That's okay. We'll, we'll keep zoomed up for this part. And then if I forget to unzoom, tell me, please just say, hey, unzoom, Sue. All right. And you can call me Sue. You can call me Susan. I usually go by Susan in my email and so forth, but I answer to both. So there we have our uh, flower already. Now we're going to attach this with, as you might imagine, some dimensionals. Um, I want to make sure that the dimensionals don't hang over either side, or I'm going to inadvertently glue my card closed. So I'm going to concentrate on putting the dimensionals uh, towards the center of this piece. And we could use one dimensional, we could use two dimensionals, but you know what, it'd be better. Three dimensionals would be so much better, right? <laughs> I like dimensionals. Can you tell? Oh, even more votes for A. Sorry, A, you did get a lot of votes. All right. Here we go. So we've got one, two, three dimensionals. You could adjust, you could just do two. It would be fine. And then we're just gonna pop that right here on our card and that card is all done. You can certainly stamp a happy birthday greeting on the inside if you wish. Um, you could add embellishments. We're gonna stop right there because we've got a whole other card to make. So I'm gonna zoom out because I almost forgot. Mm. All right, let's move on to our other card. And of course you could totally do this card with the, um, the pink tone paper and use a, a pink flower. Um, 
you know, you could use, if you didn't want to use the purple flower, we actually could have used this flower too, um, which uh, matches the, that, um, I think, is that the Edelweiss? No, I think this is the Edelweiss. I can't remember which one this is. Jasmine, maybe, maybe Jasmine. Um, okay, so we've got that one done. Oh, here's uh, another version of the card with the, um, the other flower on it and the rich razzle berry. And then here's what it would have looked like with our other choice of flower. Also very pretty. Not a wrong answer on that one for sure. All right, so now we're going to completely change it up and we're going to go Christmassy because it's July and we're doing a little Christmas in July, right? So I'm going to bring that uh, Simply Scoring tool back in. You absolutely don't have to have a Simply Scoring tool to do this. You could do it with paper trimmer, whatever uh, your preferred method of uh, scourge is. <laughs> scourge, that's not a word, but I just made it one. All right, so we're going to put our Evening Evergreen uh, cardstock in here. And again, it's four and a quarter by 11. And we're going to score this at one inch. We're going to score it at two inches. And we're just going to score it at six and a half. We're going to grab our two and a half inch by eight and a half inch piece. Sorry, I bumped the whole camera there. And we're going to score it at three inches. And we're going to go ahead and take our bone folder here and give this a good crease. Here we go. Such a pretty set. And like I said, that, that quatrefoil tile embossing folder is just stunning. So we're going to flip this whole panel up. We're going to flip this panel down. And there we have that step fold all ready to go. And then this will be our um, piece that pops up. So let's go ahead and let me think for a second. Okay, for this version, instead of using um, on this one, I did, oops, 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 hold on, hold on. They got, somehow they got interlocked together. <laughs> on this version, I did a whole piece back here, a whole embossed piece. That way when it's standing up, you, you can kind of see it from the side. This one, I'm going to take a little shortcut so I can show you a different way to do that. And we're going to um, do some uh, embossed pieces, but they're going to be narrower. So uh, that said, we can go ahead and pop this on first. If I was using a big piece, I'd stick it on first. But because I'm using narrow ones, I can do it either before or after. So we're going to put some adhesive on here, just like we did before. We've got our step all folded up. We're going to center it and line it up flush with the bottom of the card. We don't want it to hang over because that will, will make it harder for it to stand up. And then we're going to flip this over, keep it closed, put some adhesive on here. Come here, you. And fold that flap up and rub. And there we have our card all ready to stand up. And let's bring in our little mini machine here. And we're going to make some fun things to decorate our card. So we've got, um, we're going to start with an embossing folder. So we talked about that wintry embossing folder that I've been using so much on both the uh, card with the tree lot camper and also on the gnome cards. Um, it comes as a two pack with this folder, which is the pine boughs. And so we're going to make some little pine bough pieces. Um, hmm. Uh-oh. I have a question first. I have a, you know what? I'm going to do, uh, you know what? I'm going to emboss a piece possibly to be used, possibly not. It depends what you guys vote for. But this way it'll be embossed and ready, okay? So I'm doing two strips. Ooh, did I even do these the right size? Oh, I did. Oh, thank goodness. Two pieces that are four and a quarter by one and one piece that is three fourths by four. I'll repeat that. I know I said that quickly. And then we've got them in our folder. We're going to put this, um, this piece on. So am I right side up? Yeah. Uh, it says right here to use this with 3D embossing folders. That's what this is. And pair it with the number one platform. So we have everything we need here to send this through. Make some pretty paper. I'm going to jiggle the camera a little bit. I do apologize. 
can't be helped. <laughs> we got to make our pretty things, right? All right, so let's see how we did. So we've got these pretty uh, pine needle pieces. <laughs> uh, this is, again, evening evergreen. And then this one stuck to the top. And then one more pine needle piece that we may or may not use, depending on what you guys vote for. All right, well, while we've got this little guy out, we're going to do some die cutting. And we're going to use, um, so for this card, we're using a gorgeous, and I do mean gorgeous, a Christmas set. This is the Leaves of Holly bundle. We're using um, some of the dies here and um, some of the stamps for this card. Now this one as of right now is still in stock here in the US. I know in Australia it's currently not orderable uh, but as of earlier today it is still in stock. Um, I wouldn't drag my feet on that one because that one's going to be really popular. So we want this piece right here and also I'm going to need this piece right here and this one I actually die cut out ahead of time. Just trying to do a little shortcut, save a few steps. All right, so I'm doing die cutting. So it tells me right on here that I need platform number one and two of these number two plates. So I'm popping this in. And let's see. I have a piece of evening evergreen paper here. And I have this gorgeous frame with the built-in holly leaves. Absolutely love this one. I'm going to take this and pop it in my machine. I'm going to make sure my plates are slightly staggered um, so that my roller can grip them easily. I'll show you here as they come through the other side. Oh, sorry. I'll hold it up so you can see what I mean by slightly staggered. So do you see I didn't have them all three lined up. I had the top one a little bit short from the other two. You don't want to do it too much or it also can't grab, but just a little bit staggered will help it out. Now this is a super detailed die and this is a tiny little machine. So I'm going to take the whole business, I'm going to flip it around and I'm going to send it through again. I may not ne have needed to do that. It might have cut just fine, but in case it didn't, now I know it will be all the way cut. So let's pull that off. Let's see how we did here. So there we have this beautiful frame. I can discard this uh, leftover piece here. It was right on the edge with that one. And I'm just going to pop that off. Now we're going to pop out that middle portion. Um, this little teeny skinny border comes out. So you have this beautiful decorative frame. And then we're going to take our take your pick tool and get out all these little bits. But before we do that, we're going to cut something else. Is this the only thing I need to cut? I think it is. Maybe I could have fit it on with that, but that one's a pretty good size piece. So um, I'm going to take a piece of this beautiful glimmer paper. Now, when you buy this glimmer paper, you get evening evergreen, uh, gold, and vanilla. Let me grab it. Let me grab it. So this is, of course, the evening evergreen color. This is the vanilla color, which is really very hologrammy. There's a lot of pink tones in that. And then this is the gold, which is just a very rich, beautiful gold. And we're going to take this piece and our um, this die matches up with this die. So this one cov uh, cuts a holly leaf that has open spaces. This cuts the backing for those open spaces. So you can do a two-tone look. We're going to do a little glimmer coming through, a little glitter paper coming through our... Oh, Susan, it helps me put the die on. <laughs> I tell you, you guys. All right, you got to watch me every minute. All right, so I have it on my piece. You can see I've cut it almost exactly to the right size because, you know, we got to hoard that pretty paper, right? <laughs> Don't want to waste any. And I know some of you would keep this scrap and, and still capture a couple other little things out of those side pieces. And I wouldn't blame you. All right, so we're going to pull that out. So there is the piece that goes behind. And I think we've got all our die cutting done. I could be wrong, but I think we do. So we'll put this away. I just won't, I won't let it go too far away. Because we're not, uh, we're not going to cut the holly berries for this one. This is a two-step uh, die for the holly berries. 
we're actually going to make our own berries with a fun new product that I'm excited to share with you. So I'm going to grab my uh, sponge that came with my take your pick tool die brush attachment. And I'm just going to roll out these bits that are in here. Now, this is a really intricate die, so you might find that you need to use the pokey end and um, give them a little help coming out because it's really wants to hang on to this one for some reason. But I don't want to rip it, so I'm being very gentle. Come on. <laughs> there. <laughs> Convinced it to let go, but it didn't give up easily. All right. So here we go. And I got to throw this away. That doesn't work to just set it up there. Okay. <laughs> All right. So we have, isn't that just beautiful? And then we're going to adhere this behind. See what I was saying about the peek through? Now you could make that behind gold. You could make this part gold and this, uh, the glimmer, all sorts of options. Um, we went this road today. Uh, somewhere here I had... Honest to goodness, I was all prepared with a grid paper. Really? Is that it way up there? Sure. How to get up there? I don't know. Who knows? All right. So I'm going to flip this whole label over and I'm going to put some a multi-purpose liquid glue just on the back of the holly leaves. I'm just dotting it on. Now, if you when you're dotting this on, if you get too much, you can take a little scrap of... Uh, of cardstock and kind of scrape it off or you can just let it dry because it dries like a glue dot it dries sticky and so you can just let it dry so that you don't have an oozing issue and still stick your paper on you just need to wait a little while until it dries clear and then you can stick with relish because it gets really sticky i do like using a liquid glue with this glimmer paper because um, it's kind of like sandpaper. It's gritty. And so the glue can kind of suck down into the, those uh, uh, gritty pieces. So um, I could use that new product for an ornament. I like the way you think, Kathy. Mm -mm -mm. Good idea. We could even do that tonight. Do we dare? All right, so we're going to pop on this. glimmer paper and I'm going to just hold it down for a second to, onto that, that sticky glue that I squeezed in there. Make sure I don't glue it to my paper because I've done it before. All right, so there we have our holly leaves. They can be down like that. They can be up like that. Doesn't really matter. Um, I've got a little excess glue here. I'm just going to wipe that off. All right, perfect. So where are we at here? Where are we at? Let me just see. Aha! We are right here. We're going to do a little stamping. So I have the real red ink pad here. And I'm going to grab this Christmas Wishes uh, stamp from the Leaves of Holly set. That's that one right there. And... Stamp that. Okay, you know what? I can't. <clears throat> I can't see the edges good enough when it's white on white. I'm sure I've shared this before. But I really have. I have a lousy vision, you guys. <laughs> it's not great. So um, I'm gonna have put it on the gray so that I got a little more contrast. See how I did? Oh, I got ink all over myself. Huh? Well, there's a shocker. Hold on. Happen to have a paper towel at the ready here just to wipe that off because we don't want ink on our card. All right, so this uh, label, which is also from the same set, is of course perfectly sized to fit in here. And um, we're going to pop it on right there. All right, so let's bring our card back in and let's get it done here. So we have these beautiful pine bow panels. Those are going to go back here. I'm not bleeding. Nobody be worried. It's, <laughs> it's ink. It's ink. That's how I roll. That's how I roll. All right. 
So I've got some sticky added to my pine needle piece that can go right here. Again, it you can do this now. Um, it probably would be a little bit easier to get it on there if you did it before you add that center panel. But this is how it works if you forget. Or if, like me, you choose to wait. Oh, I did sticky right off the edge. That's okay. I'm just going to flip it back. I don't want any sticky off the edge. All right. And then we're going to just pop this piece right on here. And then in the center, we're going to do some designer series paper. This suite has some gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous paper. What's it called? I got to look. It is called Boughs of Holly. This is the paper. It is beautiful. I don't know if I can, doesn't want to leave its package right now. There we go. See if I can flip through. Lots of poinsettias on this paper that says holly. <laughs> There's some holly right there. Uh, so that's what that looks like. And then uh, here's some of the other side. Oops, I don't even know if you could see that. Anyway, that's it's gorgeous paper. And we're going to take this particular pattern right here with the poinsettias. And we're going to add that to that center panel. Um, ooh, or we could do this side. Uh-oh, uh-oh, we've got a voting opportunity. All right, would you like us to, let's see what it looks like with this. We're going to go ahead and... Um, Put some dimensionals on here and you can let me know which side of the paper should we do this the kind of the polka dot side or the poinsettia side and i'll lay it on here with this panel so you can be have a more informed decision now you can do the holly leaves up or down i'm doing them down it's totally up to you totally your choice and okay, this is what it looks like with the solid. This is what it looks like with the poinsettia. So are we gonna go with poinsettia or solid? Well, so far poinsettia is the firm winner. Yep, all right, we're going poinsettias based on the votes that have been received so far. And then we have another important decision to make. So again, never a wrong answer, right? All right, so we're gonna go with this pretty, pretty side of the paper. Good choice. Again, this piece was two and a quarter by four and three eighths. Now we wanna decorate the bottom panel. So, um, the bottom panel, so this is going to go right here. I'm going to go ahead and pop that on, and then we can make a fully informed decision on our bottom panel. Again, I don't want any two dots too far out, excuse me, dimensionals too far out, or they're going to stick our card closed. So those are kind of going to group together in the middle. And we're going to pop that on the center of our card. Gorgeous. Oh, so pretty. Such a pretty die. Oh my goodness. All right. And now for this bottom panel, we have a choice. We can do an, that other piece that we did with the pine. So let me know if you want the pine piece or if you want to bring in a little more of the glimmer and do a, another glimmer piece. So let me know if you want to do pine or glimmer. I can bring it up a little bit closer. Uh, good question. I'm going to put that question up and I'll address that while you're voting. Um, so to save paper, would a two inch panel here work? It absolutely would work. What you would do is then you would shorten the length as well. So it would be two by four and an eighth. And you could even do a layer behind it of solid cardstock if you wanted to, or just have a bigger border. So good point. Um, let's hide that comment. Let's go back to the votes here and see. You guys like this? Oh, there are some pine people. <laughs> I, I think the glimmer has eked out 
the race here. The pine. Oh, I don't know. It's pretty close, you guys. It's pretty close. I tell you what we're going to do. We're going to put the pine needles on because I happen to have another p another finished version here that has the glimmer. So we can see what they both look like. How about that? Then everybody wins. We have a card both ways. So let's see what it looks like with the pine. Stick that on there. Got something on it. Let's see, where's my... Mm -mm -mm. Just like some little dust on here. I'm just gonna rub that off. Okay, there we go. So that's what it looks like with the pine. And then we're gonna add a ribbon here. This is the Evening Evergreen uh, Open Weave Ribbon. It is from last year's catalog and it carried over, hallelujah, because it is absolutely gorgeous and super easy to work with. I love it. Trim my ends here and we're just going to tie the ribbon on here. That's going right across the bottom step. I just want it on the, I'll show you in just a minute what I mean. I just want it on the outside step because I don't want to tie my steps together. I want them to still fan out so that the card can stand for display. All right. There we go. And we're going to just go back and take our scissors here. Give that a little bit of a trim. So that really dresses up that pine quite elegantly. Here's what it looks like with the glimmer, which is also really pretty. So I both are really nice. Oh, I almost stuck it in the ink pad. I don't think I did. <clears throat> I was leaving that open because I was going to stamp an inside greeting. All right, hold the phone. Let's grab our piece here. And let's see, it goes like that, doesn't it? Yes, it does. Okay, so... Uh, how about we do peace and joy on the inside? Let's go with a little peace and joy. We can all use a little more peace and joy in our lives, especially at Christmas time, right? So I'm going to actually just, uh, these are uh, three separate stamps. Obviously, you can see that. Uh, I'm going to pull it a little closer towards me. I hope you can still see it, but I've got to be able to see it or I won't get it straight. I'm actually laying it right on the card, as you can see, with the sticky side of the stamp up. This way I'm sort of staging it, and then I'll lay my block on it and stick it on my block. All right, does that look straight, everybody? Take my block and just go... <laughs> you don't have to make the kissing sound if you don't want to. And then we're going to grab our... A little cushion here and we'll stamp this in the middle ish or actually up near the top peace and joy and then we're going to take um this piece a scrap piece because we're going to add a holly leaf in the corner here i'm going to show you my favorite way to do two-step stamping so let me explain really quickly what two-step stamping is. That's when you have um, a solid stamp with a detailed stamp. They go together. Um, I used to always stamp the solid one first in a light color and then the detailed one on top of it. Um, I have a really hard time now. My eyes are, are worse <laughs> as I age. Big surprise. Um, and so it it's... Uh, it works better for me to do the dark one first. So I'm going to start by inking up my detail stamp. I'm inking it up full ink in Evening Evergreen. So I'm going to stamp it directly on my cardstock here. So that nice dark green. And now I'm going to take the, the uh, solid part and I'm going to ink it up. But I'm going to stamp it on a scrap paper because I want it to be lighter than this one. So I'm getting some of that ink off. And now because it's lighter, it's easier for me to line it up. I hover the stamp over the other image and kind of look through the image and can see that darker shape and then can line them up better. So that just works better for me. You can play around and see what which of those methods is the best for you because um, everyone has their 
you know, has their way that works for them. But this one does work a little bit better for me these, these days in my senior years. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to take this piece of basic white, add a little adhesive on it, open up our card and pop this on the inside. Still plenty of room to sign it. I don't like to get too wordy because I spend all my time making the card. <laughs> so I don't write a whole lot on the inside. So I like to fill up that space. All right, so we've got that pressed down. So there we have two versions. And guess what? I have a third version. If you really like the glimmer and you really want to do, or you have a friend that loves sparkly, um, you could actually do the sides in glimmer too, like I've done on this, this particular version. Uh, but we have no berries. These have berries. These have berries. Oh, we have no berries. Let's make some berries. <laughs> so in the mini catalog, we have a new product called Pearlized Enamel Effects Basics. <laughs> Easy to say. Um, and when you order that, you get three colors. This color is called black. This color is called red. And this color is called white. But I want to remind you that they are pearlized. So this one is really more like a charcoal gray. This one is a good red. That's what this is right here. And then this one really does look like pearls. Um, I've actually got some here that I did earlier that you can see. I, I don't know why I did it on Starry Sky. That's a weird color. So sorry about that. Um, but this one is inside piece correct, Lisa. I didn't mention that. This inside panel is four by four and a quarter. Sorry about that. Thank you for asking that question. So this is what it looks like. I'm going to see if I can zoom in and see if you can see. The, this is the white, which is very much, they look like little pearls. You can make your own embellishments with this. You run out of pearls, you don't have to worry. You've got your own, and they're actually a lower profile than a, a, a pearl embellishment would be, so they mail easier. This is what they call black, but like I said, it's really like a dark gray. It's got a silver sheen to it. it would be perfect for Halloween cards or that sort of thing. Anything dark, um, New Year's would also be cool. And then this is, of course, the red. So we're going to take our red one here and we're going to add some holly berries to our card so you just gently squeeze you don't want to squeeze too hard because you want to control how, the how much is coming out and you can make big i'm going to make a little bigger berry on this one so there's one berry and to make the bigger berry i'm just squeezing a little bit more so they get a little more uh liquid coming out And one more berry right here. And there we have our three berries that kind of ran into each other a little bit. That's okay. And I'm going to put my cap on real quick. Let's zoom out. And that does take time to dry. So I can tell you it is 100% dry in 45 minutes. Um, I'm sure it's dry sooner than that, but that's the only time I've tested it. <laughs> it just happened to be like, oh, it's been 45 minutes. Oh, look, it's totally hard. So uh, I can tell you for sure it's dry in 45 minutes. You can tell because the color changes. So this one is still very wet. It's a little bit of a pink hue. When it dries, it dries to be a darker red. I'm not sure I like how I did that, how I kind of ran them together, but it is what it is, right? So, so there we have our three different versions of this card. So, and then let's not forget our other version. I got to be careful because I don't want to get red berries on it. <laughs> the first card we did with the Wonderful World. All right, I'm going to flip the camera here. Is it midnight yet? Okay, nope, it's only been an hour. Hey, that's, <laughs> that's pretty good. All right, I'm going to flip the camera here. There we go. Woo, awesome. All right. Well, thank you so much, everyone, for tuning in with me today and joining me for this fun fold card. 
I would love to do more fun fold card with you tomorrow at Crafternoon. So tomorrow, 3 p.m. Central Time, we're going to have our Crafternoon Creative Escape. If you can't join me live, that's okay. You can always tune in afterwards um, and watch the replay. So I'm super excited to share this fold with you tomorrow. Uh, looking forward to seeing with you, seeing blah, 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 blah. Seeing you then, quick reminder to go ahead and sign up for those free project sheets uh, right there at SueStanfield.com. Click, click on subscribe and you'll get a lot of creative inspiration right in your email box. Take care, everyone. Thanks for joining me tonight. Have a great night and we'll see you very soon. Bye-bye.